Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about aliases. And no, I'm not talking about the TV show. It's aliases for field names in your Microsoft Access queries. All right, if you've watched any of my videos in the past, well, not any, but most of my videos in the past, this is something you've seen me do a million times. And I've mentioned aliases, and I do cover them in my course. I cover them in like Access Expert 9 and 11 and a couple of different places. I'll put links down below. But anyways, an alias is basically a way to change a field name. Now, you've seen me make calculated query fields before. And if you haven't, then definitely check out my calculated fields video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. But essentially, if you create a query, all right, let's bring in my order detail table. Okay, the order detail table in it has a quantity and a unit price. Okay, well we can come over here and make a calculated value, right, that's line total, and that is going to be quantity times the unit price. Okay, let's zoom in, take a quick look at that. All right, this says create a new field called line total and set it equal to quantity times unit price. Okay, and if I run that now, that's what I get. Now you can do the same thing with just one field if you want to. All right, let me close this. I don't want to save it, bye-bye. All right, let's say we're making a query based on the customer table. All right, query design, and I'll bring in the customer table. Okay, and let's say I got fields in here like customer sense. All right, it's nice and big and long. I'm planning on using it in a bunch of different places. I want to type in customer sense all the time. Well, I can come in here, let's zoom in. And I can just call this CS colon. And now everywhere in the query, that will be called CS. See that? And I can use it in other calculations. Like I can say here, uh, X is CS plus one. And if I run that, you'll see I get one day after that one. See that? It mostly I use it to make long field names shorter, like date of birth, for example, is one. I always have you know, tables that have fields date of birth. And you want to have a, a meaningful field name, but sometimes in your calculations and your queries, you want to shorten that up to make it easier to work with. So here's one, for example. One reason is to make long field names easier to use, SSN for social security number, okay? Right, DOB for date of birth. You don't want to change the original field name, especially if it's a database you've been working with for years. You don't want to go through and have to change all that, but you can, you know, make it, make an alias for it to make it easier to use in your queries. Another reason you might want to alias if you inherited the database from someone else and they've got field names with like bad stuff in it. Like I always say, don't put spaces in your field names. Well, you don't want to go through with the entire database and change all of their work because who knows where that field name might be. So you can just make yourself a query, fix all of their field names, and then use that query moving forward. So if you fix their customer table, you can make your own customer queue with all proper field names in it. Then anything else you use in the future, they're going to build forms and reports and other queries off of that query instead of their original table. This is especially helpful if you've got a linked table that's linked to their database that you can't change, or maybe you know they send you a spreadsheet that you have linked into your database and you can't change their field names there either. So this is one way you can do that. Another thing, I used to get databases all the time and people would send me field names. I'm like, what is that? What does it mean? People use these meaningless field names all the time. And you can use this alias method to make those field names make sense. Like, I, seriously, I would get field names like this, P3, P3Q04. What? Why, why did you do that? What? No, there's no reason for that. Total sales. <laughs> now, whenever I'm preparing a tutorial, I always do a little quick Google search to see what everybody else has to say. And I've seen a few instructors out there, some videos say that you could reverse alias this. You know, like if you want to make your column names, your field names more humanly readable in your queries, you can go this way. For example, you've got a last name field and you wanna make the last name field look nice, like last space name in the column header. Okay, yeah, you could, but why? No, first of all, we don't want our end users working directly with our queries. That's a big no-no in my book. Your end users should only see forms and reports, never queries. So this just makes things confusing. Um, and you can't use this query in a form report. Otherwise, that's the field name, which we don't want spaces in our field name. So I don't really see a reason to do this. Use a form 
use a form header, use a label for the user to see, okay? There's no good reason I can think of to do this. If you're following my rules, of course. And if you're not going to follow my rules, what are you bothering watching my tutorials for? Go watch the other guys. Go, get out of here. The only exception I can think of for that rule is if you want to do this bad aliasing, is if you have to export your data to something like a text file or Excel and you have to meet their specifications so that they can import your data. Like you've got to match that last name, field name exactly like that. Then, okay, sure, you can break my rules, but that's not your fault. You didn't build your database that way. You had to deal with your client. <laughs> Another use for aliasing, if you've got two tables that have the same field, you got a customer T description, you got an order T description, right? When you run those, they literally will show customer T dot description, order T dot description. If you don't want to deal with that, aliasing comes in handy. You could put in here like customer description, right? Or some abbreviation thereof, whatever you want, right? And then order description, right? Whatever you want it to look like. And then that's what you end up with in your query for your uh, field names. I went over another example of aliasing in my multiple joins from the same table video a couple days ago. And this is where you've got a customer record and the customer's got several links to different employees that you deal with, right? You got a sales rep, you got a service technician, you got an instructor, and those are all people from the employee table. So when you make multiple joins, you're gonna wanna alias those different joins, sales rep name, service tech name. So it's not just employee T dot employee name, right? Go watch this video for more information on this one. This is probably when I use aliasing the most is this, this guy right here. Aliasing is handy in aggregate queries. If you don't know what an aggregate query is, go watch my aggregate query video. See how many times in one video I can say the word aggregate. <laughs> well, let's say you've got uh, an order table and you bring in your order details table. Let's bring them in over here, right? Link them up. And uh, we want to get each order and the sum of the, let's just do unit price. Just keep it simple, right? So we bring that in like that and we want to aggregate that all up. So we go totals and we change this to sum and we run it and there's our sum of unit price. Well, we don't want it to be sum of unit price. We can very easily aggregate that right here, right? We can just call this unit price total or whatever you want to call it. That's, that's, up, that's up to you. And now that field will show up as unit price total. And yes, I know I forgot to multiply it by the quantity. That's a different story, but I'm just showing you the, the alias here, okay? <laughs> You advanced users with your newfangled SQL, yes, you can use it in here too. You can use aliasing directly in here. Uh, let's say you got select first name, last name from customer T. All right, you can alias by doing this, first name as FN, comma, last name as LN, right, from customer T, and you run that, and that's what it looks like now. And you can even alias the table name if you want to. You can come in here and say, um, and this usually is when you have multiple tables involved. Let's say you've got this situation set up with customer T joined to order T. Right, we'll go to our SQL here. All right, that's a bit mess, right? But what you can do is you can say, okay, you got select this stuff from customer T inner join order T. What you can do is say customer T as C and then order T as O, and then everywhere you see customer T, just replace that with a C. C, 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 O, right, O, and same thing here, C and O. It just makes your SQL smaller and easier to deal with. And then if you run it now, you still get the same results. See? And these guys have been aliased. Oh, I forgot to zoom back out, hang on. There you go. See, and it actually changes them here too. That's just mostly for a, for brevity to make your SQL statements easier to deal with. Right? I don't do that much. So there you go. That's aliasing, what it is, why you'd want to use it. And um, yeah, that's about it. I cover it in a bunch of different lessons, uh, mostly Access Expert 9 and then my SQL seminar series, which is really good if you want to learn SQL, by the way. But uh, yeah, there you go. 
Hope you learned something. See you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.